Hi guys, Audrey here. So we're going to do one last partial fractions example. This is gonna be a case two example. So we can see that immediately because the denominator is already factored. The thing that makes this case two is the fact that that x occurs two times. So this is gonna be the case of the x squared. Um, so even though x squared looks like a quadratic polynomial, we're really going to be thinking of it as if it's like x minus zero squared. So we're really thinking of it as a linear factor that occurs two times. So we have the integral of 3x minus 1 over x squared times x minus 2. So our step one here is to check and see if we need to divide. And the answer is no, because the degree of the numerator is 1. The degree of the denominator is 3. So be careful that x squared gives me 2, the x minus 2 gives me an extra 1. So the degree of the denominator is 3. And 1 is less than 3. So we have no, no division necessary. Which brings us to our step two, which is to factor the denominator. But in this case, that denominator is already factored. So we should also be thinking, would a substitution work here? If I let u equal to the denominator, will the derivative be the numerator? The answer here is definitely no. I mean, we have a product in the bottom, first of all, but because the degree is three, the derivative will have degree two, so there's no way that's the numerator. So the substitution's going to fail. So we are going to move on to step three, which is to create our partial fractions decomposition. So we have three x minus one, x squared times x minus two, the x squared occurs two times, so we're going to have a over x plus b over x squared. It gets two fractions of its own, the degree of that x increasing each time, plus c, x minus two occurs one time, so it only gets one fraction to itself. Now for step four, we want to solve for a, b, and c. We wanna solve for those numerators. So we're gonna start off by multiplying that x squared times x minus 2 over to the other side. So we'll end up with 3x minus 1 is equal to a. One of the x's cancels out, which means there's one x left over, and the x minus 2 plus b. Both of the x's canceled out. x squared, gone, and we just have x minus 2 left plus c, only the x minus two cancels out, so we have x squared left. Now, we want to plug in the zeros. We've got two zeros here, x equals zero, x equals two, the things that caused that original denominator to be zero. So we'll start by plugging those things in. When I plug in x equals zero, I get negative one is equal to zero, plus b times negative two, plus zero, to get b is equal to a half. Next zero is x equals two. So we're gonna plug that in. We get six minus one is equal to zero plus zero plus four c. So five is equal to four c. So c is equal to five over four. Now we're out of zeros. Which brings us to the next thing we have to do, which is plug in the number of our choice. What's a good number? Zero is usually a good number. Already plugged in. One's a good number. Negative one. I could also plug in 84,848 if I wanted to. I don't want to. I want to plug in one. So we're going to also plug in one here. So x is equal to one. So we plug in that. We get three minus one is equal to a times one times negative one plus b times negative one plus c times one. So I know b and c already. The thing I wanna solve for here is a. So I'm gonna get that two is equal to negative a plus b times negative one, so that's negative a half, plus c times one, so that's plus five over four which gives me that a 
is equal to negative a half plus five over four minus two, which gives me negative five over four. All right, so we've got our a, b, and c. Now we need to go back and rewrite our integral. So we end up with the integral of 3x minus 1 over x squared times x minus 2 dx is equal to a, which was negative 5 over 4 over x plus b, which was negative a half over x squared plus c, which was 5 over 4 over x minus 2 dx. Now for this one right here, you might want to think of it, you might want to bring that x up to the top so that you can easily see what the antiderivative will look like. So we'll do that. So we're going to have negative a half, oops, negative a half, x to the negative two. I also want to remind you here, our constants ended up being fractional. And when we have fractional constants, we always want to make sure that we put them in the numerator and don't move them down to the denominator. So in other words, I'm not going to do negative 5 over 4x. That's usually a bad plan. That will make the der antiderivative a little bit more challenging to, to, to calculate. So we really want to keep those fractional constants up in the numerator. Keep them as the numerator and not bring any part of it down. Okay, now all of these are known forms, so we can get that this is negative 5 over 4, natural log of x, minus 1 half, but then we're going to have negative x to the negative 1, plus 5 over 4, ln of x minus 2, plus c, which I'll simplify to make just a look, look just a little bit prettier. So we have plus 1 over 2x plus 5 over 4 ln of x minus 2 plus a constant. Um, just realize that b is actually positive 1 half, so we'll just go back and fix that. I have negative issues. We all know I have negative issues. So anyway, that means that this will actually be a minus sign right there. There we go. So this is our final answer. Um, that's all. Bye.